Welcome to Our Ventura TV. I'm Nicole Van Damme, and we are so lucky to have with us two very knowledgeable guests. We have Winston Wright with the Planning Department of Ventura County, and we have David Hansen with the Building and Safety Department of Ventura County. Thank you both so much for coming. Thanks for having us, Nicole. Thank you, Nicole. Would you each share briefly with our audience what your title is and what you do for your departments? Sure, Nicole. I'm the permit coordinator for the planning division. I also manage the front counter. So the front counter provides public information, issues ministerial permits like additions and simple permits. And we also take in the discretionary permits that are more complex like subdivisions and conditional use permits. How about you, Dave? And uh, as I said, my, my name is David Hansen and I'm one of two district managers in the County of Ventura. We have two offices, uh, one in Simi Valley uh, our East County office, and we have a West County office, and that's where I, where I do my business. Uh, I oversee the day-to-day -day operations of permitting, uh, plan review, and inspections of buildings and structures in the unincorporated area of Ventura County. Before we get too deep into the nuts and bolts of what your departments do, I was very excited to learn that your departments touch on some of the hot issues of the day. So I'm going to just toss out some issues and you can jump in if your department works with us. One of the biggies, water conservation. Sure. Um, water conservation is brought up um, in the planning division mostly through general plan policies. And we're actually in the midst of a general plan policy update, a general plan update that you can go online and look to. It's um, the vc2040.org. Um, website. You can go and see where the status of things and, and there's upcoming um, stakeholder meetings and community outreach meetings this, this winter and that's going to be a process that's going to take a couple years but people are welcome to get involved and water issues are brought up in, in our general plan policies. And building and safety is heavily involved I would say in, uh, in water conservation in uh, three different areas. Um, um, Assembly Bill 1881 uh, is a new new assembly bill that uh, is called the Model Water Efficiency Landscape Ordinance, which requires uh, us to oversee um, outdoor water use uh, and um, uh, for new structures and additions and things like that. Uh, we also have SB 407, Senate Bill 407, which requires uh, water efficien efficiency uh, plumbing fixtures being installed and retrofitted uh, when you, uh, when you add or build new um, and uh, we're also heavily involved in public outreach when it comes to uh, gray water and rainwater catchment systems uh, mostly in the the permit exempt systems which people most people don't know about and we try to get out and educate the public and let them know that there are there are systems out there that you can install without a permit and they gray, are gray water systems and they're in the code they're in the plumbing code now well so that's very that's very exciting mm -hmm. So you mentioned the general plan. Can you briefly tell our audience what the general plan is and uh, how they might participate? Sure. Well, the general plan is the policies that regulate land use, either in current and future use of land. Um, excuse me. And so the general plan update that's going forward now can be out. You could be looked on online, uh, vc2040.org. VC2040.org. Uh, yeah, and the, the general plan is basically what establishes the sense of place for a community. It's the vision a community has for itself. And there's current um, meetings that will be outreach meetings available for the public to attend. And um, it's, it's basically what we sent, we'll have a vision for the future of Ventura <coughs> County and the unincorporated areas. So uh, when you talk about sense of place, is it things like sidewalks or how much you can develop agricultural areas or what type of things is it? Exactly. There's different elements in the general plan and some of them are regarding um, preservation of open space, preservation of resources like agricultural soils, um, also economic development and transportation. So those sort of elements are brought up and basically how we want to deal with those different parts of what represents land use. So, so getting back to some of those hot button issues, uh, what about short-term vacation rentals? Well, the sh short-term vacation rentals is an issue the Board of Supervisors have asked the Planning Division to look into. And so you can anticipate that there will be some future um, regulations going into place. Uh, and again, our website, 
in the general RMA website, excuse me, the vcrma.org backslash planning. Um, you can find updates on the various issues, particularly short-term uh, rentals, medical marijuana. Those so medical of, marijuana medi also. Yeah, yeah. yeah those, are, those are things that the Board of Supervisors has asked us to look into. And those hot topic issues, you can see updates and where we are in the, in, in the review of those regulations. So that's, that's very exciting stuff. What about solar power? Solar. I would say solar is a hot topic with building and safety. Uh, uh, we actually issue uh, a lot of our permits over the counter um, with no fee. The Board of Supervisors passed a, a ruling that we could, uh, we could waive fees uh, and save the general public a little, a little extra um, uh, money on, on permit fees. Uh, we, still, we still go out and do our inspections and what have you, but with solar being so... Uh, so prevalent these days, anything up to a 12, a 12 kW system, uh, roof mount, standard roof mount system, uh, it's basically over the counter permit. And that's excellent for people to know. Absolutely. So I was told that one of the most common type of permits that homeowners go for is the room addition. So from a homeowner's perspective, what's the role of the planning department versus the role of building and safety? In most cases, the planning division is looking at set regulations or standards, setbacks, height, so and whether or not you have sufficient parking. Um, and vast majority of our permits are over the counter for, for that kind of permit. And uh, for room additions, building and safety is involved in the regulation of the, the adopted building codes uh, that are in force at the time they, they come into plan check or, or, uh, or for a permit. Uh, we actually... Uh, we will bring you in uh, into the permitting process, uh, making sure you have all the proper documents. Uh, we'll do uh, plan review, make sure that the plans meet the, the minimum requirements of the code. And we also do the inspections uh, from beginning to, to end, from the time they put a shovel in the, in the ground to the time we sign off on their, their certificate of occupancy. Now, I heard that creating the right plans that you know satisfy everybody can be very expensive, but that building and safety came up with some cost-saving measures, some pre-done designs. Can you tell our viewers about that? We have a number of standard plans on our website, which is, uh, our website is www.vcrma backslash, uh, I'm sorry, vc.org backslash building safety uh, in our handouts and information. Uh, things like, uh, for instance, uh, detached patio covers, attached patio covers detached garages, um, things like that. Uh, we have a standard plan for those that have been pre-engineered. And as long as you meet the, the criteria of the standard plan, um, you can basically get it over the counter with a zone clearance and, and possibly another a couple of clearances from other agencies, depending on where you're located. And would that save not only on getting the drawings done, but also on permit fees? Yes. Uh, the standard, uh, uh, standard plan review fee is a percentage of the permit fee. What we do is we charge a 50% of the plan review fee uh, because it's already been pre-engineered. Oh, so that's, that's, a, that's it is a, a great cost savings. savings for people. Absolutely. So let's say that I'm a homeowner wanting to do a room addition. Winston, if I came to the planning department counter, what should I bring with me and what would I learn <clears throat> there about starting my project? Well, you can come with as little of as your address and a concept, um, or as, but a simple sketch would be helpful as well, kind of knowing what the layout would you want to accomplish. Um, we would look at the zone designation of your property and, and let you know what the setbacks would be re required of you. And we would look at other things like whether or not the site's non-conforming, a really old house might have a non-conforming setback. It, 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 those things might need to be addressed. So, Knowing what, you're con you're going, what you want to do and where you want to do it on your property is very helpful because then we can help you with the layout of what would be allowed ministerially over the counter and what might need a variance or something a little bit more complex. But for most cases, people can come in with a concept and an address and we'd be able to help them out with those sort of questions. So you kind of look at like how it might look from the street, how it fits on the lot. What about like the flow of traffic inside the house? Is that... Does that matter at all? Um, well, yeah, we're not really looking, and Ventura County doesn't have design reviews, so we're not really okay. too concerned about how it looks from the street aesthetically, but we are looking at setbacks and <coughs> making sure that it fits into the community as far as what's being 
proposed is allowed on the property. Um, the internal flow of a home we do look at as well. We want to make sure there's internal access throughout a house and you're not creating a second dwelling unit if you're not allowed uh. one. Or if you are allowed a second dwelling unit, making sure that you have the parking requirements. So sometimes people want to have other units on their property and in, in many cases in Ventura County that is allowed. So we, you know, people ask, hey, I just need a mother-in-law unit or a guest unit. I want to have a separate kitchen. So we look and make sure that that would be allowed for the property based on lot size and location and zone designation. And um, when you're coming in for just a simple addition to a home, we look at internal access to make sure if you're not asking for a second dwelling unit that you do have internal access throughout all the rooms and things like that. And how does the county view website can you share that with our viewers what it is and how that what information they sure can find sure out? and going back to the website that i was bringing up before which which dave also has a link to it's vcrma.org backslash planning and if you go to that website there's what we call the um, arcview gis connection that's available to the public you can actually it's an application or a program that you can put your address in and find the zone designation. And many of the same layers of information we look at the counter, whether or not you're close to a creek, in a floodplain, um, your zone designation, the land use designation, the general plan. So there's a lot of information available at, on that application. So that homeowners can educate themselves. Yeah, you can go look online and, and find your zone without having to ask the planning division or call in. It's a great resource to have. And and David, in terms of I went to as a homeowner wanting to do a room addition, if I went to your counter, what type of things might I learn there, and what should I bring? If you were to come to my counter, the first thing I'm going to ask you is where is your property located? Uh, if you have an address or an assessor's parcel number, I would uh, look it up uh, first to see where you where you are. Um, and I would ask you what type of structure you're going to install uh, or you want to construct. As you said, it's a room addition. Uh, I would then most likely create a checklist for you uh, with all the different departments, the agencies and divisions that would be associated with your particular property. I would use the RMA GIS um, program. Uh, we have layers involved uh, that, that give us an idea of how many different agencies are, are involved. Uh, probably the first person I would have you see is, is Winston because planning, they, they, they regulate what you can put in and on the ground and setbacks and building heights. So that would be their first stop. Uh, I would uh, then most likely send you over to, to talk to a fire representative. Uh, because uh, there are a number of areas within the County of Ventura that are high fire hazard areas and there's certain certain requirements and restrictions uh, to building. So uh, if you came to my counter, I would start you out with a checklist and give you a, a, an overall view of the, the people that you would need to see because it's not just building and safety. And sometimes the process can be uh, arduous, but uh, at the same time, I want to help you through the process and by giving you the proper information at the get-go, uh, hopefully I can I can get you through the process a little easier you know sadly we're almost out of time but mm. you guys have just been tremendous and so valuable I know we didn't get a chance to talk about the one stop permit dot Ventura dot org but that dovetails into your checklist uh, this is Nicole Van Dam signing off for our Ventura TV thank you so much for watching thank you so much for everything that you've done for us thank you for having us and be well and happy till next time.